I see the event very much as a conversation about faith. Uh, the, the whole point about this book, what we talk about when we talk about faith, is that people need to talk about it more. That we've all become rather coy, uh, both in, the, in our professional lives and with our kind of wider circle of people around us. We just, we think it's, it's a difficult subject, it's a controversial subject, and people often make us feel very uncomfortable. So this event is going to be a space where we can talk about that, this sort of taboo that has, has arisen around talking about faith, but also just talk about it in a in a in a thoughtful, challenging way, we've got a panel of very different people. We've got Christopher Jameson, Abbott, broadcaster, head of the English Benedictines now, um, at, sort of at one extreme, as it were, and at the other we've got Sarah Denant, broadcaster, novelist, writes these wonderful novels now about the Renaissance, brought up Catholic, steeped in Catholicism. Um, uh, but but now not a not a member of the church, um, and you have me in the middle. I suppose yeah, obviously I am a member of the church. I uh, I am a practicing Catholic, but I'm, I suppose I'm re relatively critical of it at, at different stages. So hopefully the interchange of our experiences where faith overlaps with career and work, but also looking at how we start those conversations about faith. Um, why we shouldn't be embarrassed, and what sort of things they cover. You know, is it now that people of faith, as we've learned to call ourselves, so not just Catholics, across all faiths, are outsiders in a secular society? Is that bad? Obviously, in some ways it's bad. But does it also uh, give, give you an advantage, a, a way of somehow um, challenging orthodoxy from outside r r as opposed to from within side because I think one of the reasons that people are so anti-faith at the moment it, it goes back one step almost because they're anti-institutional and they see faith, religion, organised religion as an institution and therefore they dislike it because they think it's all about rules telling them what to do and there's, you know, to a certain extent that's true about um, organised religion so for all of those reasons I think it's going to be a really interesting um, challenging debate. I'm hoping I'm going to learn something because what I certainly found in these interviews that are collected in the book is every time I sit down and have a proper conversation with someone about faith I learn something new. I think people have become coy about talking about their faith um, partly because of this secular orthodoxy which I suppose is best uh, expressed in that terrible Alistair Campbell phrase when he was Tony Blair's spokesman at 10 Downing Street, we don't do God. Um, therefore, you know, faith is something you do in private, it is entirely separate from, uh, uh, from your professional life and it somehow makes you puts you outside the norm. Of course the irony of it all is what we absolutely know is that Tony Blair spent all his time in 10 Downing Street doing faith as it were and it, it is absolutely part of things. So I think people have become rather nervous about that. I mean some of the people in the book, uh, some of them fairly well-known public faces, um, Dermot O'Leary, Delia Smith, these are people who don't really talk about their faith very much because often in their professional careers it's seen as an obstacle if they're not careful. You know, oh don't employ them. I mean Dermot O'Leary is, is a very good example in lots of ways. You know, here is a man, Mr. Saturday Night, up in all these charts of the you know 50 most attractive men in the world. It can be a bit of a turn-off then to turn around and say, well, I'm Catholic as well. But you see, he says a really interesting thing in that conversation. He said, people like watching me on television because they like my personality, and Catholicism is part of my personality, so why should I keep quiet about that? So it's those sort of taboos. It's looking at those, those taboos. Politicians being nervous to talk about faith. Um, Michael Gove is in the book, one of the interviews in the book and he talks about this sense of as a politician if you say you have a faith it's almost like talking about talking as if your policies are divinely ordained. Uh, the other antithesis of that really is Patricia Scotland, ex-Labour cabinet minister, now the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, also in the book, who talks about everything she has ever done in her life, professionally, politically, having God's fingerprints on it. He's told her to do it. So different views of how you, you deal with that as well. And I think with different people, uh, these different views chime, the kind of coy view, the, 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 the upfront view. So all of those things, all there to talk about at the event. And, um, and I hope really fascinating. I'm really looking forward to it anyway. It's really important as a society we talk about faith. Well, partly because um, an awful lot of people in the world are people of faith. Uh, if you look at our world today, 
uh, faith is one of the great motivating factors in it. It's one of the things that um, is both, well, I would obviously say a blessing, but also uh, other people would say a problem. Um, uh, we, we, we can't just ignore it and pretend it's something kind of medieval no one does anymore. And I suppose the other reason that people don't want to talk about faith, particularly in this country, is, oh, well, no one does it anymore. You know, and what they endlessly quote are those church going figures um, where, you know, the people going to the Church of England on Easter Sunday is down to whatever percentage it is. I mean, it's still a, a, a pretty large number of the population anyway. But yes, the numbers are going down. But I think what that completely ignores is the fascination that people have around what we might call spirituality. People call it mindfulness. We call it all sorts of words nowadays. I think people are still profoundly attracted to the idea that there is something more to this world than meets the eye. That rationalist, secularist, sceptical, scientific view that all we are is something you can put in a test tube and kind of prove whether it exists or not. Um, I think people constantly find that wanting, really. That, um, and so there is this great appetite out there to have a conversation around these things. It may not work with institutions. People may not want to sign up. And some of the people in the book are people who have faith but really want no part of institutions in that way. Uh, but it is a great uh, motivating and moving force in our world. And I think if we get away from the institutions, I'm not saying these issues aren't really, really important, but, you know, Vatican politics, uh, the, the, uh, the abuse scandal, they're not the only things that faith is about. Um, we have a food bank around the corner, uh, entirely run by people of faith from the local church. Uh, it seems to me most of the food banks in this country are run by people of faith from churches and religious institutions. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about these good things that happen in the world. Let's not only talk about the church as a kind of negative factor in terms of women's role, in terms of same-sex relationships or whatever. Let, let, let's see this broad picture. And it can be very hard to get that over. 